How do you write a research paper on a passage in the Bible? Well, understanding God's Word requires commitment and openness to learn. It requires tenacity, curiosity to explore, investigate, examine, and confirm its truth. But we don't just want to know and understand Scripture. We want to know and understand the Lord of Scripture. So we study and research the Bible so that by knowing Him in the pages of Scripture, we may experience Him better throughout the day. God's Word is designed to bring us into His presence and transform us, to lead us so that we might glorify Him and impact our world and contribute to the big plan. Now the Bible may initially seem like a wardrobe filled with a bunch of old fur coats with mothballs. But if we enter its pages and leave our world, so to speak, and enter the world of the Bible, the Lord will draw us into a world that's much bigger than the one presented to us each day. Entering the world of the Bible is fabulously odd and exciting. We may feel out of place at first, but like Lucy, the best way to read and study God's story is to step into his world, the world of the Bible. What will he show you along the way as you write your paper? As God's Spirit brings the Word to life, we start to think higher and larger and truer thoughts that are worthy of him. You know, in our culture, we place high value on everything instant, you know, instant fast food, instant oatmeal, instant access to internet. Our impatience, however, often carries over to studying the Bible. People often hop around to random verses without considering its context. But if we read any other book, we don't take isolated statements in the middle of the book and ignore the surrounding statements. So why do we do this with Scripture? Is context that important? Well, say we set a table for lunch. Looks like a good enough lunch. Could be for anyone, really. But what if we looked at the context of this lunch? We'd find who we're having lunch with. Beavers! God has chosen to reveal himself, his big plan, through an assortment of personalities from various cultures and addressing a variety of situations. Okay, so there's no tucking beavers in the Bible, right? But as Eugene Peterson puts it, we eat this book when we study it, when we research it. We take it into our lives in such a way that it gets metabolized into acts of love and cups of cold water. So instead of asking, what can I get out of this paper? Or how is this relevant to my life? Start asking, how can I get into this? To the point that what I'm studying is the lens that I interpret my own life. So what are we going to do here with the, with the paper? Well, researching requires, here's a theological term, exegesis. Exegesis simply is an investigation into the original meaning of the author. Ex means out from, referring to deriving something out from the text. So we're just simply looking for what did it mean? What was the author's intent? What did he intend to convey to his original audience? You know, none of us like to be taken out of context. And so the Bible did not emerge in a vacuum. You'll be examining the historical and literary context. The second word I'd like you to know, you'll be doing this as well in your paper, so... What did it mean? You'll also explore hermeneutics, another theological term that just means interpreting and applying 
the original intent to contemporary life. So exegesis, what did it mean? And hermeneutics is, what does it mean? You know, many people jump right to application. Or they say, they read a passage and they just say, well, this is what it means to me. But a text cannot mean what it never meant. And so exegesis, finding out what did it mean, must precede hermeneutics. What does it mean? So how do you begin your paper? The first thing you'll need to do is to pick a verse from the New Testament. If you're feeling overwhelmed, ask the Lord what topic he'd like you to study. Perhaps you're feeling anxious. Well, maybe you want to find a passage in the New Testament that deals with that. Or maybe you're interested in justice or faith or trials, forgiveness, the kingdom of God, the Holy Spirit. There's so many topics you could explore. You can consult the concordance in the back of your Bible uh, to find something that interests you. And you can always ask me if you need ideas. I got plenty. I'm here to help you along the way. So once you pick a verse from the New Testament, look at the verses that surround your passage. We're going to call that your unit. Most units are about 12 to 18 verses long. Some are 10, some are longer, but they're usually about this amount of verses. So then what do you have to do for this paper? Well, you've picked your verse. And the paper looks basically like this. What do you have to do? Well, the first category is historical context for 60 points. Then you're going to be looking at the next category, the literary context for 70 points. The third category you're going to make a conclusion and some application of your verse for 60 points. And finally, you throw in your bibliography for 10 points. Okay, that's your paper in a nutshell. So let me use an example for you. Say I was interested in looking at giving. I want to learn about giving. I want to become a better giver. So I start looking up scriptures about giving, and I'm struck about this one passage in Mark chapter 12, verse 44. For they all contributed out of their abundance, but this widow, out of her poverty, has put in everything she had, all she had to live on. I'm interested in this. Okay. So that verse, your verse, whatever verse you pick, will be the title of your paper. Okay, that's your first page. All right, so you've picked your verse, then you look at the historical context for 60 points. So what do you do? You start with your author. Who is your author? And investigate. So what do we know about Mark? That would be my, my pursuit. I would highlight his faith journey, find out what we know about him. Then you lo locate where he wrote the composition and the date. So I would look at where and when did Mark write his gospel. Then you look at who were the original recipients. So I would ask, who did Mark write to? Where were they located? If you pick a passage out of Corinthians, you're going to be looking at Corinth. If you pick a passage out of Philippians, you're going to look at Philippi, these cities. Describe them. Find out about them. Investigate the social and political and religious climate of that time of composition. And ask, was there an occasion for the writing? Investigate that. I'd have to find out, did Mark have an occasion for writing his gospel? Was there a reason? A purpose? I'd like to find out. What will be helpful to you is to look at 
New Testament introductions. There's a lot of different ones. I'm just throwing some examples. Introductions to the New Testament or surveys of the New Testament. They will give you a wealth of uh, information on your book. You can also consult uh, commentaries. Um, and you can go to a website called studylight.org. And when you go to studylight.org, you, you'll see Bible Study Tools. There you go. You can click on Bible Study Tools, and um, you'll have a wealth of information there at your disposal. You can also go to, say, BibleStudyTools.com, and you'll, you'll see if you click on Study that there's lots of commentaries, concordances, dictionaries, Bible encyclopedias, all these to help you gain information. So head to the library and use these online study tools, studylight.org and biblestudytools.com. There's others, um, but those are the two I usually use. Next, you're going to address the literary context for 70 points. So you're going to analyze the unit surrounding your verse. So what you want to do is to confirm that boundary of your passage, that unit that we're calling, the, pass, the, the verses that surround your verse, because you don't want to take it out of context, right? So let's look at my example again. So I've picked Mark 12, verse 44, okay, one verse. And so I'm looking at this, and I notice that there are headings. There's the widow's offering, and then right before it, beware of the scribes. So that doesn't sound like it's part of my unit, does it? But then I notice, look it, there is a comment about widows. So I'm going to include that section in my unit. So my unit will be Mark chapter 12, verses 38 through 44. All of it, okay? So once I determine my unit, as we're calling it, um, we can move on in the literary context. So we confirm the boundary, and then what do we do? Well, we look at that unit. We zero in on it, and we explain the unit's development of thought verse by verse. Look for literary devices. Are there any uh, exhortations? Is it a teaching? Are there warnings? Is, it a, is there a correction? Is there irony, imagery, metaphor? You, you name it. Commentaries will help you analyze your unit verse by verse. So in your paper, you just want to go verse by verse by verse and explain the development of thought. Okay? You want to be alert for Old Testament quotations and allusions. Well, how do you know? Well, sometimes it's obvious, and, some, and those commentaries will point it out for you and help you. But you can also use other sources to help. Some of you might have Bibles that have cross-references, they're called. And here, in this, it's in the center column, these little notes are very helpful because they will give you uh, other portions of the Bible that have a similar verse or have something to do with it. You'll see in these study Bibles that um, it, has, it has a wealth of information on your author, the occasion even, and then there's other study notes along the way. So that might be helpful. Um, you also, I'd be very impressed if you got a couple journal articles. So you can go to the library website of Bethel and click on articles, okay? And once you click on articles, you're going to have a number of things to look at and decide which one you want. Well, for our purposes, you want to click on ATLA, Religion Database, okay? So once you click on that, It'll look like this, 
and then you want to type in your verse and research it. So when I did it with Mark chapter 12, verse 44, you can see all these journal articles come up. And I always ask for the all text because I don't want to try to find it in the library. I can just read it in the comfort of my home. All right. So try to find two or three journal articles. I'll be very impressed. The reason journal articles are very helpful is that, you know, commentaries will talk about an entire chapter. They might devote um, a couple pages to your verse, but a journal article will devote 20 pages to your verse. Okay. All right. So then what is left over? Well, you have your conclusion and application for 60 points. So consider all the research on the context. You're going to put it all together. You've done all the research on the history. You, you're looking at the literary context. And now you can tell me, or in your paper, explain the meaning of your passage in light of all that you've learned. That's a lot of work for just the conclusion. Then, once you get your conclusion down, you want to compare four English versions of your verse. So I'm just going to use BibleStudyTools.com. And you can see my verse I've typed in, Mark 12, 44, right there. And right underneath it, it says Translation. Well, if I click on Translation, it'll pull up all these different English versions and more. I think there's other languages too. So there's a lot of English translations available. Look at all of them. What you want to do is pick four. Just pick four. You can pick whatever ones you want. It doesn't matter. Um, but you want to create a table. So here's my verse. And I just picked different ones I thought were interesting. Things, uh, different ver um, versions that worded it a little different. So I color coded them. So notice my verse. Here's the contemporary English version. Everyone else gave what they didn't need. But she was very poor and gave everything she had. Now she doesn't have a cent to live on. Here's the New Living Translation. They gave a tiny part of their surplus. Okay, that's a different, that, that's, that, that's different than the first one. Everyone gave what they didn't need. Here's, here the second one is, they gave a tiny part of their surplus. Here's the NIV. They gave, they all gave out of their wealth. Here's the message. All the others gave what they'll never miss. This is interesting, isn't it? Just a little difference in the uh, interpretation. But notice that the message says it differently than the other three. She gave everything she had, all that she had to live on. But the message says she gave extravagantly what she couldn't afford. She gave her all. And notice, I thought this was interesting, the, uh, the, uh, the first one there, the contemporary English version, I, I embolden it in black. It adds, now she doesn't have a cent to live on. So I, I think this is fascinating. So what you want to do is put a table like this in your paper that highlights the differences of four different English versions, your choice. So you just want to do your verse, not the entire unit. And you want to comment on the similarities and the differences. Does one version reflect the meaning of the verse better than the others? You'll want to explain that. Now I want to offer you an option for some of you that want to do some more and learn more about um, Bible study tools. You do not have to do this next section, but if you want to, I'd be impressed. Okay, Bible study is fun. You can go to studylight.org. I often use this. And what you want to do, instead of study Bible study tools, you click on language tools. Now, you don't have to be a Hebrew or Greek scholar to use this. You don't. 
it's helpful if you were, but you don't have to. You can use these tools. So you click on language tools and what comes up is this Strong's interlinear search. And so I typed in my verse, Mark 12, 44. Press go. Okay. So what comes up is this. Looks like Greek to me, but you can see my verse. They all put in out of their surplus. So I want to look up that word in the Greek and just say, I know no Greek. Like you would say that. I don't know. I can't say that. But if you click on that keyword surplus, you can see a bigger definition of that word. You might want to put that in your paper, what you learn. Um, again, I would be very impressed by that. So that's optional. You don't have to do this word study, this Greek word study, but I think it's fun to look at some of the keywords. Okay, application. Application is where you get to preach. You've finally done all the work. You've looked at the context. You've explained the meaning of the verse. You've looked at the different versions. You've done all this work. Now, give two examples of how this text is applicable to our lives today. Give two examples. You can have a hypothetical example. You can have a real example from your own life whatever you want to do, but spend time in reflection and communion with the living God. What's your personal takeaway? Lastly, what must you do to finish well? Don't forget to put in your bibliography for 10 points. I will look at it. Most students use MLA format, but APA is also fine for footnotes, okay? But an adequate bibliography will include four commentaries, two journal articles, and a New Testament Bible survey or introduction, or a Bible encyclopedia. Choose scholarly and substantive materials when using the internet sources. So what I mean by that is Try to stay away from blogs that are not scholarly and bless those pastors' heart, whoever those people are. But this is an undergraduate level paper. So you want to have um, scholarly resources for what you're citing. Okay? So have fun and enjoy the process of exegesis and hermeneutics. You can do this and I'll be praying for you.